Thank you very much, Brother Hatcher. I am greatly honored to be here, and I appreciate very much the privilege. This congregation has meant very much to my family for many years. In fact, as long as I can remember. Many years ago, Dad was preaching in Foley, and before that, in various places. But uh, this congregation was very dear to him. Brother Brantley, the others who were associated with the congregation then, and he appreciated all down through the years the work being done here in the stand for the truth. Since last year's lectureship, he passed on to his reward, but I remember him on occasions like this, especially because he loved this congregation. I appreciate very much the invitation to be here. I appreciate uh, Brother Michael Hatcher. appreciate the very generous things that he had to say. wish I could live up to them. But it's good to be with him and his family. appreciate the wonderful elders of this congregation and the congregation itself. The year of work is tremendous. I was thinking back, and we were discussing last evening, I think with Brother Oath, the men that have been on this program, great men of God who are no longer with us. And we honor their memory. But I appreciate uh, getting to see all of you. The question before us is a tremendous question, and what you would expect from a young virgin who learned that she's going to have a child and she knows that she has never had sexual relations with any man. Absolutely essential to our salvation and to the Christian system is the incarnation of Jesus Christ. And the virgin birth is the how and the when of the Incarnation. For this reason, Satan has, and his imps have done everything they possibly can to try to destroy and undermine in the past hundred years and more the fact that Christ is the only begotten Son of God. In uh, Matthew 1.20, we find that the Holy Spirit would overshadow the womb of Mary and the holy thing that was begotten in her shall be called the Son of God. There have been those who have tried to say that Christ was begotten only as we are begotten spiritually. But my friends, Christ had a specially prepared body. Hebrews 10 back. And that holy thing in her womb was the Son of God, the only begotten of the Father. This is a cardinal doctrine, one of four of Christianity. How shall this be? The Holy Scriptures, which cannot be broken, John 10, 35, predicted Malachi 4, 5, and 6. John the Baptist, Elijah, who would come and turn the heart of the fathers to the children, the heart of the children to the fathers, in preparation for the King of Glory. Luke recorded the foretelling of John's birth to Zechariah, the husband of Elizabeth. She had been buried, both of them were well stricken in years, Luke 1 7. They prayed for a child, and Gabriel told Zechariah, so You're going to have a son, child, you're going to have a son. And he said, uh, 
What's the sign that we're going to have a son? Well, he was stricken dumb until the birth and the naming of John. He was serving as one of the priests. After his priestly duty was over, within a week or two, he returned home. Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months. Blessing God because he was taking away her reproach among men. In the sixth month after John was conceived, Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed of a man. Her name was Mary. His name was Joseph. Luke 1, 26 and 27. The angel informed her how greatly favored she was by God and said, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found faith with God. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. He shall be great, shall be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And of course, his reign will have no end. 1.30-33. No doubt this brought back great memories to Mary of the Old Testament Scriptures predicting that Christ, the Messiah, would be born of the Virgin. Genesis 3.15, Isaiah 7.14, Isaiah 9.16 and 7, and other passages. Then she learned that she would be the one who was the Virgin who would give birth to Christ, the only begotten of God. We marvel at her faith. She asked not for a sign as had Zacharias. She simply wanted to know how is this possible? How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Luke 1, 34. She would give birth to the Son of the Highest. The demons acknowledged that Christ was the Son of God, the Son of the Most High. Mark 5, 7. Mary expressed no doubt. She simply wondered, how can this happen? Because I have strictly maintained my virginity. But she would conceive she would conceive before she actually married and had sexual relations with Joseph. She realized the impossibility of this through natural means. It had not happened in all the annals of history. That's her question. No, this is not doubt, but this is simply a childlike response to knowing that it would happen. How? Nicodemus gave a childlike response. How can a man again enter his mother's womb and be born? For her to conceive without the agent for man would be to violate the physical law, universal law of procreation. Well, what was the answer? The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee. Wherefore also so the holy thing which is begotten shall be called the Son of God. Verse 35. The angel of the Lord used the most delicate, reverent terms to describe this marvelous miracle of conception. He did not use demeaning crude averment of physical relations as the modernists do, absolutely without justification. When you see uh, the Lord in a cloud overshadowing something, it indicates His presence and His power, like in Exodus 20, 38, when the cloud overshadowed the tabernacle. In creation, the Spirit of God brooded upon 
the face of the waters, Genesis 1-2. It simply would indicate that God the Spirit was active in this miraculous conception. It shows the power of Jehovah God. This would enable the God-man to come about. It would enable Christ to be both the second person in the Godhead and man. Christ became the incarnate one, Emmanuel, Matthew 1.23. The Holy Offspring of God. He had been deity from everlasting. Now he would be humanity. Someone said, well, I figured it out. Christ was 50% uh, human and 50% divine. He was 100% wrong. He was 100% humanity and 100% deity. And anyone who fails to confess the deity of Christ come in the flesh cannot go to hell. He will die in his sins. And he is described like the Antichrist by the Apostle John. What are some arguments by the modernists against the virgin birth? Well, number one, they say that the virgin birth violates natural law. Well, that's true. That's what made it a miracle. But do we not realize that the one who enabled Mary to conceive as a virgin was the one who created the heavens and the earth? Yes, in one word, well, what's more difficult? The creation of the universe? The creation of man from dust? The creation of the body of woman from the rib of man? The breaking up the fountains of the great deep, enabling Isaac to be born as a result of miracles on two people, the dividing of the Red Sea, the cutting off of the powerful Jordan River, tearing down instantaneously the walls of Jericho, or the virgin birth. Now, which one's the most difficult? God had it in his plan before the foundation of the world from, from eternity. Revelation 13, 8. When did the necessity of forming a miracle ever thwart the eternal purpose of the Almighty? He wouldn't even alter his purposes. Psalm 89, 3 through 5 and 33 through 37. Yes, the one who created the universe can get any time he wants to in the natural law and do anything he wants to with it. Number two. They have held that the virgin birth, as well as other descriptions of Jesus in the New Testament, was simply pagan, or a Jewish legend in Beth Bard, and appropriated to the Messiah. They say these ideas came from ancient mythological stories that were transformed into the biblical story. The fictitious and corrupt accounts of the reproduction to the gods of Greece who had offspring with other gods became the evolution of religious thought and it became the idea that the Holy Spirit had sexual relations with Mary or some other similar story. Imagine the decent, pure, righteous, overshadowing, not sexual relationship, of the Holy Spirit which enabled Mary physically to be with child, being compared with the carnal, sexual, licentious, corrupt, perversion, characteristic of heathen mythology. You talk about blasphemy. Monotheism preceded polytheism. Not only that, but God's plan from the virgin birth for the virgin birth goes back to Isaiah, but before then to Job, but before then to 
In Genesis 3.15. But before then, to his eternal purpose. The stories of the so-called virgin births in mythology are nothing more than the substitution of God's performing the sex act instead of man. And then some who call themselves Christians come with that kind of mess and cast a reflection on Mary as Christmas at Matthew's house. I can't imagine how those who even claim to be Christians can come with such garbage. In the third place, they are more that New Testament writers simply appropriated various Old Testament scriptures to lend credibility to the false idea of the virgin birth. Passages they say that had nothing to do with him were appropriated by him, by New Testament writers, as they added the share to the, the charisma, the kernel of truth, what little Christ did that was nothing miraculous, as they added the layers of mythology to this, then they added the mythology of the virgin birth. Therefore, I hear some of the teachers and some of the graduates say, excuse me, say, we have to demythologize the charisma. Well, you know where they've been studying. It has not been at the feet of faithful men and at the feet of those who believe the Bible. Well, what is the necessity of the virgin birth? First, the deity of Christ, the God-man, is impossible without the virgin birth. No human being is divine. We're created beings as were the angels. Christ is a member of the Godhood, and he would become flesh. And that was possible only through the virgin birth. Mary conceived Christ. The physical body came through Mary and this miraculous conception, but the Spirit, of course, came from God. He was the Father. He placed the male part of that with the egg of Mary. And so Christ was enabled to be both God and man. When Christ said, I am the Father of one, the Jews took up stones to crucify him, or to stone him. But let me tell you something. He was indeed God. God in the flesh. Christ said, God said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Only the virgin birth could make this possible. <laughs> The authority of Christ is impossible without the virgin birth. Isaiah 28, 16 says that there would be a tried stone left, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 3, 11, Isaiah 28, 16. In order to be tried, Christ had to suffer and to die as the God-man. Though he were a son, yet learned his obedience by the things that he suffered. Hebrews 5, 8. Christ has all authority over the church, the kingdom. All authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. That was not given to him before he rose from the dead, after he, before he was the tried stone. He was raised to sit upon David's throne. He is Lord in Christ. No wonder millions of the heavenly host sing out, Worthy is the Lamb that has been slain to receive the power, the authority. The third day the resurrection of Christ would have been impossible without the virgin birth. Was Christ really raised never to die again a singing to the Father? Indeed he was. Contrast this with the resurrection of Lazarus, Dorcas, the saints which were raised when Christ was on the cross. They 
had to die again. But why did not Christ have to die again after his resurrection? Because he was the first fruits of the dead. He symbolized the general harvest when all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and come forth. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. John 8, 28 and 29. He was declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. Romans 1, 4. To deny the virgin birth is to deny the very point of Hebrews 2. He became flesh in order to die for us. But because he was the Son of God, he could come out of the cemetery. It's not difficult for us to die. We can't come out of the cemetery. We can't die for ourselves. We can't overcome the grave. The angel, angels could have, by the power of God, taken on flesh, but they were not God. They couldn't come out of the cemetery. But because Christ was God, because He took on flesh, He could be killed. But because He was God, He could come out of the cemetery. And that gives me the assurance that my dad's going to come out of the cemetery. The miracles of Christ would have been impossible without the virgin birth. Nicodemus said, we know that thou art a teacher come from God because no man can do the signs which thou doest except God be with him. John 3, 1 and 10. The woman at the well said, We know that this is the Messiah because he told me things that he couldn't know otherwise. John 4, 42. He's the Savior of the world. Those that sat in darkness have seen a great light. John 1, 11. In fulfillment of Isaiah 9 2. Isaiah prophecy for us, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Next, the atonement through the blood of Christ would have been impossible without the virgin birth. Only the blood of the innocent Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world through His vicarious suffering and death could pay the tremendous price for our sin. The sacrifices of the Old Testament could not take away sin. In Hebrews chapter 10, we find sacrifices and burnt offering for sin. Thou was not except, but a body thou hast prepared for me. Now please notice that, that those sacrifices of those thousands, perhaps millions of animals that were killed, and so much that the blood must have run like rivers, could not take away even one sin. They pointed to the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. John 1, 29. They were but a type, a shadow. We're cleansed by His blood. We're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Romans chapter 1, 5 and 6. Christ carried His own blood to the mercy seat. You see, when we committed, when we sin, we commit spiritual suicide. Life for life. In other words, we take our own lives, then we have to suffer eternally in a devil's hell. Because of the penalty of our sins. Christ said, I will pay the price. And so the innocent Son of God paid the price for you and for me. The ascension of Christ to the Father in heaven would have been impossible without the virgin birth. Daniel saw these four beasts coming out of the stormy sea. And of course there was a lion, and there was a bear, and there was a leopard, and then there was the diverse beast, Rome. And it was in the time of Rome that the Son of God would set up a kingdom. How would he do that? Well, the Son of God would ascend to the Ancient of Days, verse 13. 
And the angels were laid. Christ in His coronation as King before God. Psalm 24, 7 through 10. And He would receive authority and a kingdom. Now if it had not been for the virgin birth, the same one that could have descended would not have been able to ask sin to receive the key. Ephesians 4, 8 4. The mediatorial work of Christ in the seventh place would be impossible without the virgin birth. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 1 John 2, 1. Now how? Because he was the God-man. Job cried out for a mediator, a daysman, the girl, who could lay his hand upon the shoulder of God because he was God, and upon the shoulder of man because he was man, and reconcile man to God. Christ is that God-man because of the virgin birth. Consequently, we have a mediator. We do not hesitate to approach the throne of God with boldness because we have a high priest who was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He was tempted as we, yet without sin. Therefore, he knows how to succor us and to defend us before Jehovah God. In addition to that, the second coming would be impossible without the virgin birth. Christ came to die, then He was resurrected, He ascended to the Father. But before He ascended, He said to His apostles, not, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receiving myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now please notice that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by him. How in the world is this possible? For the virgin birth. If it had not happened, we wouldn't have a ghost of an opportunity to go to heaven. Then in addition to that, let us notice some affirmation to the virgin birth in Old Testament prophecy. Old Testament prophecy goes back really before the creation of the world in man. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14, the Bible says, How much more shall the blood of Christ cleanse us? Who through the eternal spirit, I think his own spirit, like the margin in the American Standard Version, his eternal spirit, Offered himself without blemish unto God. When Adam and Eve sinned, Genesis chapter 3, Christ stepped in and said, I will suffer this vile death for them in their place. Therefore, they were not killed instantaneously. My friends, it is that that true that that is a prophecy not of the antagonism between a man and a serpent but between the seed of woman before man ever realized that woman had a seed pre-scientific statement that Christ of the seed of woman born would bruise the head of the serpent Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4, In the fullness of time Christ came, born of woman, be born, born under the law. Isaiah 7 14, A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Now please notice that here is a virgin, and that virgin is going to conceive. And Matthew said that it happened that Mary conceived miraculously so that it might be fulfilled. A virgin, Pythonos, in one meaning possible, would conceive 
and bear a son. I give evidence that all my means the virgin, not young woman. Hope you'll read the book. In Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, a child is born. And he is an eternal father, so forth. Jeremiah 20, 31, 22. Jeremiah prophesies of the new covenant. I'll make the covenant not with you like I, the covenant I made with your fathers, when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Church age. In the same context, in verse 22, the Bible says, A new thing hath happened in the land, a new creation. A woman shall encompass a man. There would be nothing new about a man giving, a woman giving birth to a male child. There would be nothing new about a woman going up and hugging a man, but it would be new for a virgin to conceive and bear a child, a son, without the agency of a man. The virgin birth. I wish I had time to talk about Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, where the one who would be the ruler in Egypt, the Israel, rather, who's going forth from the old, was from everlasting. That's God. Talking about the Christ who would be born of the virgin. But in the New Testament, Space, time would allow for only a brief discussion. Matthew said, and Joseph begat, uh, Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, in this genealogy, from Abraham, of whom, that is, of Mary, feminine, in the Greek, was born Jesus, who is called Christ. The others begat, 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 begat. But here is Joseph, who was begotten, but he was the husband of Mary, of whom? Mary. Feminine. Of whom? Feminine. Was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Matthew 1, 16. And look, the liberals are not right when they say that Matthew appropriated this and it had nothing to do with the virgin birth. That's foolishness. Matthew said it would happen like this so that the prophecy of Daniel could be fulfilled. But then in addition to that, in Matthew 22, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were trying Christ. One group would come to him and ask him a question, and boy, he would confound them, and they'd go away, and they'd have a, another pep rally, and another group would come in and ask him a question, and they'd leave disappointed and not having tricked him, and the other group had, had whetted up their courage, and they came back, and finally when they gave out a soap, they didn't have any from the beginning, Christ said, I'm going to ask you a question. Fair enough, isn't it? And then he asked, what think you of Christ? Whose son is he? They say, son of David. He said, then how then did David in the spirit by inspiration call him Lord? That is Christ. Saying, the Lord, that is God, said unto my Lord, Christ, sit thou at my right hand till I put thine enemies under thy feet. If David didn't call him Lord, how is he his son? Because no Jew is called their descendants Lord, but David called Christ Lord, and yet he was his son. Well, the only answer was virgin birth. They refused to answer, and they left, and that was the last question they ever asked Christ. Mark implies the virgin birth when he says in the beginning of his gospel record, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Luke talks about the virgin birth when he says the Son of the Most High God will reign over the house of Jacob forever 
and you descend from David in the flesh. John records that the Word was with God in the beginning, at the beginning, before the beginning, and the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. Absolute requirement that he was born of the Virgin. John 3.16, the modernists among our own brethren try to answer on the begotten there, but they can't do it. They talk about something like Jerome's jumble. Let me tell you something. Jerome's not the one that had the jumble. I mean, some since then that have listened and followed the lives of the modernists who are all jumbled up. Paul said, how could he come forth from the cemetery except because of the virgin birth being the Son of God, Romans 1, 4. 